I hope you're having a great day and I hope you're staying safe at home. Today I want to talk about a very, very powerful word. It's called grace. A lot of people say, Luke, what is grace? A lot of people use the word divine grace. Is it based on a religion? Is it based on spirituality? No. Grace is something that we're going to learn about today. It is a gift that everyone has, but most people cannot see it. Look around, step back right now. Let's do a little bit of reflection and introspection. Today's world, there is so much of stress. There is so much of anxiety, and yet we have so many comforts. We can go shopping to feel better. Once the shopping's done, we still are dealing with the void that we have in our life. Some people drink alcohol, they feel good while the alcohol's in their system. Once the alcohol has come down, they're back to reality with their same old voids and emotional issues. Some people resort to drugs, some people over-socialize, some people go into self-isolation. Everyone handles negativity and emotional stress differently. What is going to fix emotional stress or that void in your life? Is there something that can fix it? A lot of people say, have faith things will get better. But people say things aren't better. Why should I have faith in my life? You will realize the power of faith when you understand what grace is and that it exists in all of your lives, even right now. And then when you start reflecting on all of the grace that you've received in the past and right now in the present, you start to realize that there is an energy that governs all of us. Call it God, call it the universe, whatever you want, whatever you want. And that power, gives us hope and faith that things can get better. Like a patient who has cancer and thinks that it's all over, I got cancer, I'm gonna die. But the patient goes into remission and lives an entire lifestyle, an entire life without ever getting the cancer again. Or a car accident, where the fire, the firemen look at the car accident and say, impossible, there are gonna be no survivors in that. And then when they untangle all the metal and cut it open, they find a baby who's living. Okay, my point is, and that gives us hope and faith to believe that things can get better. The worst can get better, and sometimes it doesn't. That's destiny. That's something that you cannot control. So what is grace? It's a gift that all of us have. How do you feel it? By living your life mindfully. Only when you live mindfully can you notice all the grace that you have in your life. Grace is an energy that we have to learn to identify, and we have to learn to receive. If we are not open to receiving it, we will never realize that there is grace in our life. So for example, some people call grace luck. Oh, that was good luck. Some people say, oh, that was a coincidence. Some people will say, oh, it's God's mercy. Some people will say, oh, it happened, it's God's will. Some people will say, oh, it was a blessing. Some people will say, oh, these are mysteries of life. These are all words for grace, divine grace, okay? Now, for example, you can't see it. If you're constantly driven by your ego, you're driven by your pride, your busy life, you're not mindful, you're living, reacting to life, there's negativity, you're living in your past, you're living in your future, you cannot see the grace that you have in your present, and you miss it. But when you feel the power of grace in your life, it gives you hope, it gives you faith, it gives you strength to move on. Things that material things can never give you, never ever give you. You can buy everything you want in the world to feel better and you're going to feel better, no doubt about it, for a while. But the people who are lucky enough to realize and appreciate and be grateful for the grace that they have in their life, that's what gets them through ups and downs, the good, the bad, the sad and the happy and everything else. Simple. If you want to see something but your eyes are closed, you cannot see it. It's as simple as that. If you don't want to see something, you'll never see it. If your mind is shut and rigid and you don't want to see a possibility for something getting better in your life, you're never going to see it even if it exists. If you've closed your eyes to love because you've had breakups and betrayal and hurt or a divorce or whatever it is, you're never going to feel it even if there is love right in front of you in your life. Because you've closed yourself to it, you're never ever going to see it. If you close your eyes to believing in miracles, even though miracles are happening in our lives every single day, small miracles, large miracles, you're never gonna realize that miracles actually exist. So to feel grace, you, to, to realize what grace is, you have to be open to learning how to identify it and how to receive it. People don't wanna receive grace. They don't wanna receive help from people today because we have egos and prides, we believe we're entitled, we believe we can do it on our own. What's the point? 
what's the point of humanity if we cannot coexist with one another, be interdependent on one another, walk up to someone and say, hey, I need help. I'm sad, I need help. Can you hear me out? Go up to our parents and say, listen, I don't like this. Hear me out, I need your help. Speak to your partner, speak to your children, your children. You allow them to be open to you, open, the, open communication. So let's go further into grace. There's also physical grace. Look at a beautiful bird flying, its wings soaring in the sky with an elegance. That's also grace. Look at a sports person and an athlete doing a long jump, a pole vault with grace and elegance. So grace, another way of looking at it is an ease. It's an ease that you build in your life. There is an energy driving all of us. And when we move with that energy, we flow. We flow with an ease. The moment we put blocks and restrictions and resistance, we block that energy and that ease moves away. The discomfort, sometimes disease. So we affect grace. Grace works with energy and rhythm. So when you look at a bird, there's grace and there's rhythm. You look at a runner, there's grace and there's rhythm. If the runner is running the right way. And in your own life, there is an energy and a rhythm. When the energy and the rhythm moves together, you have grace in your life. There may be all the stress in the world right now and in your family and in your home or at your workplace, but with grace and elegance, you ease through it. You see some people, even in the most stressful situation, they have elegance, they have grace because they're, they're aware there's stress in their life, but there is an energy that they allow to flow and a rhythm that they allow to coexist together. An act of showing mercy is also grace. Someone forgave you for something that you did. That was grace. You forgave someone, you gave them grace. Grace is a beautiful gift that we can give one another. Let's say you make a mistake, okay? You've made a mistake, you're feeling horrible about yourself and you're hoping that someone comes and says, hey, let it go, it's okay, it was only a mistake. That is grace, it's gonna make you feel better, okay? So, you're gossiping. You're gossiping about someone's misfortune, okay? Again, identify that the misfortune that you're gossiping about could have been your misfortune, but it isn't. Again, grace. That's how we move from negativity to positivity. And when we see how much of grace we have in our life, it gives us strength to get through the worst thing. Okay, a cancer diagnosis. Your cancer's in the liver. It's not spread. You are lucky. Grace, again. Yes, it's unfortunate you got cancer. No one should get it. It's unfortunate, but there, along with that negativity, there's also grace that it hasn't spread. My cancer spread all over my body, but doctors, we have a treatment. We've done this before, we can do it again. Grace, grace again. As human beings, the negativity will suck us in and we'll say, why me, all of that stuff. Fine, do that, but move back to identifying the grace that you have in your life because that is what is gonna get you out. You can never motivate a cancer patient or a sick person, but you can inspire them by showing them what is going well in their life. And each of us have to find that grace in our life. Today, if you're healthy and you got to know that someone's fallen sick, but you're not sick, that is grace. Receive it, be grateful for it. You heard about an accident, someone died in an accident. It wasn't you, you're still alive. Grace again, it could have been you. Be grateful for that grace and receive it, okay? You have a meal every single day to eat. Most people grumble about their meals, shout at their cooks, you put too much oil, you put too much of salt, all of that, eat with ingratitude. These things don't work. It's grace that you have a meal. But you'll feel entitled, oh, I worked hard, I earned money, I should have the best food, the best chef, cook my food. It's okay, it's still grace that you have it. It's still grace that you're able to eat the meal in front of you. You could be on a liquid diet with a, with a pipe in your throat and never have solids again in your life. It's grace that you have that meal and you can eat it, okay? You have pure drinking water. You know how much of the percentage of the world, countries around don't have even hygienic water to drink? It's grace every time you have a sip of pure water that you can. You didn't get angry today. You're working on yourself. That's grace. That's grace. Yes, you did the self-work, but it is grace that you didn't react angrily in that situation. You didn't get injured. It's grace again. You know, you could have been the one with pain and suffering, but it's not you, it's grace again. You got that appointment when it was so difficult, it's grace. You got that sudden promotion when you never expected it, it's grace again. What we need to understand is, we have to be open to it. For that, we need to be mindful. 
Everything happening in your life right now is powered by an energy called grace. Sometimes it turns out to be in mercy. A lot of people who come to me, Luke, I can't forgive this person, okay? I just ask them one question. How many times in your life have you been forgiven? They'll say one, two, three, four, five times. I said, if you've been forgiven, no matter what, okay, it doesn't give you the right not to forgive someone else. It's difficult. It is difficult. Go through the pain. You've been hurt. You've been, you've been wronged and all of that stuff. But if you've been forgiven, you've been shown grace, you need to show grace to other people. Doesn't mean you ever have to become their friends again. You don't ever have to talk to them, but you need to forgive them for your own grace and your own energy to continue. I made another point about this. Yep. People are locked in the past. They're locked in the future. You can never see the grace that you have in the present. Never. And that's why your past pulls you down or your future controls you. You can only take lessons from the past. You can only hope and work towards paving a way to a bright future. But right now it's the present and there is grace in your life. You have to receive it. You have to allow it in your life. You've got to see it. You've got to feel it and you've got to be grateful for it. And for that, it's mindfulness. So many people say they've made great gratitude practice like something on a to-do list. Technically, it's a nice way to have a gratitude journal and start getting into the practice. But after a while, you should never have to open up a book. You should never have to do that. Like exercise, maybe you learn a couple of moves from a trainer, but after a while you've learned it, you do it on your own. The same thing with gratitude. It should happen automatically. You shouldn't have to sit with a journal and think of 10 things that I'm grateful for. It should happen instantly because you're living mindfully and you see grace. Right now, the internet's not fail me. I can do this beautiful life, okay? I shouldn't expect that the internet should always work for me just because Luke's going live at 1.30. This is grace. How many times the internet's broken and I couldn't go live? This is grace again. It's whatever we want or we can feel entitled. I'm Luke Coutinho, I go live at 1.30, the internet has to be there. And then it doesn't and I'm disappointed. I've created a whole different energy, but I see this grace and I'm grateful. If it goes, there's nothing I can do about it. I'll be live tomorrow or the day after. So when we start to learn to in our life, everything changes. But today, people are pulling down one another Instead of pulling down that person, what grace do you have in your life? When you have grace in your life, you're not even going to want to waste energy on pulling down someone, bad-mouthing someone, entangling yourself in rumors and gossip that doesn't serve you. Just be grateful. When someone's talking badly about someone, just be, you don't know, you can't judge what's right or wrong in the first place. Just be grateful that you have grace in your life and you are not that person who's going through that misfortune. So you see, gratitude and grace go together. As simple as that. Today, you go to someone's house, you're on a diet, you're very picky about your food, and they serve you a biryani or they serve you a burger. Eat it with grace. But if you get into that resistance and block energy, oh, I'm, I'm on this diet, I don't eat this, I don't eat that, I don't eat, you're just blocking grace, you're being ungrateful, you're not recognizing grace, you eat it with grace, that burger will just break down in your system without a problem. Because the kind of energy you eat your food with makes a big, big difference. Big difference. How many of you know people who eat junk and desserts and can only afford cheap food and yet they're healthy and they probably have better bodies than most of us? Grace again. They eat. They're grateful that they can even afford a burger. As simple as that. So when we learn to live with grace, everything changes. Everything. You're trying to lose weight and you're stuck. You've hit a weight loss plateau. Your whole life crumbles, you're angry, you're irritated, you look at the weighing scale in the morning, the number isn't move, you take it out on your family, your children, you call up your trainer, you say, I want to change my diet. Where's the grace in your life? Fine, the scale didn't move. What else is going well for you in your life? Be honest with yourself. What time did you eat your dinner last night? Was it a late meal? Tell me about the sugar that you ate in the last three days. Be honest with yourself. But don't miss out because of your own negativity on identifying all the grace that exists in your life. And that is what grace is in the simplest way. So when you look at the religious part of it, when God shows you mercy, it is grace. We call it divine grace. It doesn't have to be religion based. It could be spirituality. Divine grace is the very fact that we woke up this morning, we're breathing, we're alive, we can move. Or you got a PET scan, you're in remission, your diabetes levels have come under control. You have money in the bank. You may have lost your job. It's bad, but you've got money in the bank for the next three months. That's grace again. 
Your homework for today is to reflect on all the grace that you have in your life. And then you feel this beautiful strength within, no matter what's not going well, you know you'll be looked after, you know you'll be guided because everyone has divine grace. Lucky are the few people who can feel that grace and receive it beautifully. Their lives bloom. The people who are shut towards grace because they're stuck in their own little cages and prisons will always be in a state of constant struggle because they don't have grace. Without grace, there can be no faith. Without faith, your hope is right down. With hope, you're living, but you're dead. It's as simple as that. You don't want to be living and be dead at the same time. You want to be living a wholesome, meaningful, enriching life. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. And remember, you care is all about you.